everybody, my name is Shibuna Ajipia from Baby Shine Slab, and today we'll be looking at probability. Now, probability is actually really simple. Do you see this bag here? So, we have some marbles inside it, but that's not all to probability. But just as an introduction, let's get started with this. So, there are nine marbles, we can see that, and how many reds are there? Well, there are one, two, three. I know you're not stupid, so I can fill in the greens and the blues for you as well. So, what is the probability that if you take out a random marble from this bag, it's going to be red? That would be 3 out of 9, as there are 3 red marbles in a bag of 9. It can also be simplified into 1 third. Well, that would be 2 over 9. And the blues, 4 over 9. Are you starting to see a pattern? So essentially, the probability of one thing, let's call that thing A, is equal to essentially the amount of cases where A happened divided by amount of possible cases. So for example, A, in this case, if we were taking a red marble, would be the chance of us taking out a red marble from the bin or the bag. And the amount of cases where that would happen would be three, one, two, three. And the amount of possible cases would be nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So, now we understand what probability by itself is. But we need to go on to something more complex, unfortunately, because we're not messing around with fifth grade crap. So, let's say we have 50 people, and they ask, we ask them, do you like blue? green, both, or you like another color. So, uh, we can see that some people here like green, some people here like blue, some people here like both, some people here like neither. So, first of all, we need to make a Venn diagram of how many of each type there are. So first, we're going to count how many greens there are. So how many are there? Well, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So there are 11 people who like green. What about blues? There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 who like blue. There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Or did I miss count? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. People who like both. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Who like neither. This is definitely not based on actual stats. It's based on a random number generator. I'm sorry. So, can you answer these questions? Find the following. First of all, what the probability of somebody liking blue? Well, that would be because there are 10 plus 13 equals 23 people who like blue, and there were 50 people overall, 23 out of 50. Things are gonna get more complicated soon though. The probability of green is, of course, 11 plus 13 is 24 out of 50. But here's where things get complicated. The probability of two events, A and B, is sometimes interchangeable with P of A times P of B, but sometimes not. So, how does this work? Well, essentially, there are independent events, which
which as you can guess are events that have no effect on each other. And then there are dependent events, which are effects, uh, events that do have effects on each other. Like for example, um, if there's a tsunami or an earthquake in uh, Haiti in 2008, that likely doesn't affect your performance on the regions in 2014. But dependent events are if you study for the regions in 2014, you're likely going to do well on the regions in 2014. So that's the example of independent versus dependent events. Independent events, the chance of both happening is P of A times P of B. For dependent events, P A of B will uh, can P A and B will usually be given. Like for example, in this problem, where it's given as thirteen. Even though it's given, though, doesn't necessarily mean that uh, these two are dependent events, like in green and like in blue. So, the probability of both will be 13 out of 50. Also, we call this the multiplication. So, let's keep that in mind. that we're going to learn about now. Fourth, uh, the probability of a random person from the group liking neither would be 16. Five, the probability of a person liking blue if a person likes green. So, what would that be? Well, there are 20 so there were 11 people who just like green individually. There were 13 people who like green with blue. There were 24 people overall who like green. So that means that this would be 13 out of 24. So now, what about green if a person likes blue? Well, of course, again, that would be the amount of people who, all, who like both divided by the amount of people who like blue exclusively. Or, or divided by the amount of people who like blue exclusively plus the people who like both. So, 13 of 23. Alright. So now, so are these two events liking blue and green independent and explain. So are they independent? Well, we can find out by using, utilizing the multiplication. So we know that independent events have the probability of both events happening when you multiply them by each other. So if we take the probabilities of a person liking green, which would be 23 out of 50, and we multiply it by uh, the probability, wait, no, not 23, 24, sorry. And we multiply it by 23 out of 50, it is most certainly not going to give us 13 out of 50. So that means that these events are not independent. So now we have to find eight P with the probability of green or blue. And this is a little trickier, but still easy. But to do this, we have to utilize something called the addition rule. So what is the addition rule? Well, it basically states that P a or B, which exclude and so P A or B 
for events that are dependent is just p of a plus p of b minus p a of b. It's the same for independent events, except you can replace this with p of a times p of b because of the earlier rule. So, this is the addition. So green or blue would be, well, there's the probability of A, which is 24 out of 50. There's the probability of B, which is 23 out of 50. And hold up, hold up, this is like 48 or 47. But wait, don't panic. Because now we've got to subtract P, A, and B which would be 13. So, minus 13 of 50. So, that gives us 34 out of 50. So, that's the answer to all of these. Thank you everyone for watching, and we'll see you in the next video, where we'll be talking about standard deviations.